been having me teach on faith because you can never hear enough about faith. This is the Christian walk. This is the life of the believer is that we live by faith. It's that we live by faith. Yes. Paul said, in him I live, move, and have my being. What was he saying? In him I live by faith. Everything I do is by faith. Yes. We get up by faith. We speak by faith. We work by faith. Amen. Everything we do for the kingdom of God is by faith. Yes. You can have small faith or you can have no faith. You can have small faith. You can have some faith, great faith, and strong faith. You It's levels to it. The Bible said we go from glory to glory, faith to faith. Now, in this day and time, you got to have faith in God. Because these people, they anti-God. They anti-Christ. That's the spirit that's in the world today. It's anti-Christ. So in these days, you got to have faith in God. Because they come in with all these man-made diseases and viruses that's killing people. Amen. You got to have faith in Psalm 91 that it's not going to touch you. Yes, Amen. You got to have faith in God. You got to have, in these last days, I'm going to tell you something. You got to have strong faith in the area of healing and in the area of finances. You got to have strong faith. And God, see God, he know the end of the thing. So God, he will deal with us according to what he see, the end outcome. See, God knew all of this stuff was going to happen and take place before it, way before it even happened. Way before we even thought of What's going on now? And see, God will deal with you way back before this time even come. So when the time come, you are already strong in faith for healing and you are already strong in faith for finances. Right. You need faith for finances. Amen. Amen. Loaves of bread going up, meat going up. Yeah. You're going to have to have faith for finances. Because right. I'm going to tell you right now, your job ain't enough. Your job is not your source. You're going to have to have faith for finances. You're going to have to believe God that God is the one that's going to provide for you. Amen. Amen. And it's a lot of people today, a lot of people walking around today, they don't have faith. They don't have faith in the area for healing and they don't have faith in the area for finances. I'm going to tell you, man, my God, man, if you got to have faith in any area of life, make sure you got faith for healing and faith for finances. Right. You need faith for healing so you can you can uh, be well and do what God called you to do. You can't do that with no sick body. Right. You need faith for finances so you can bless the kingdom of God. And so you can enjoy the blessing. Yeah. You need health so you can enjoy what God blessed you with. Right. You need the money, faith for finances, to bless, to be a blessing to somebody else and to enhance the kingdom of God on the earth. Right. You got to have faith. Now, the Bible says we are to, the Bible says God who quickeneth the dead and call those things that be not as though they were. Now, what does that actually mean? If you in the midst, let, I'm going to just say sickness. If you in the midst of sickness, if you in the midst of sickness and dealing with sickness, you call yourself healed. Even when in the natural, you not healed. Right. You call yourself healed. You call yourself healed. 
Now, when you first say it, you may still be sick all the whole time you're saying it. But you applying positive pressure on a negative situation. The positive pressure is the faith in behind what you're saying. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, what you say, you will have what you say. Now, I always say this, that's either good or bad. You can have faith in a negative report. You can have faith in fear. And whatever you fearing, that's what's going to come to pass. How do you know when somebody in fear? When they always talking and it's always, you can tell it's wary and it's some kind of anxiety behind it. When you're constantly talking about it in a negative light, that's when you know you're in fear. When you go to the extreme to do certain things, I'm gonna give you an example. Job, he went to the extreme. He was offering sacrifices every day for his children. Right. Why was he doing that? Because he was afraid something was gonna happen to him. Right. So he said, I'm gonna offer up sacrifices on a daily basis that something may not happen to my children. That's what Job said. So he went to the extreme to do. That's how you know he was in fear because he went to the extreme. Now, guess what? The same thing that he went to the extreme about, that's the exact same thing that happened. Right. All his kids got killed. Yep. How did that happen? Because of Job. Because he had a door open. If you've got fear, if you got fear in any area, if you just got fear, period, you got a door open. You got a door open. And we need to repent. See, I can, we need to repent and we need to get it right. See, I can talk about faith and fear because I understand both of them. I've been in faith and I'm in faith now. And I've been dealing with fear for a long time. A long time. The same thing that happened to Job, well, the same principle that happened to Job, it happened to me. I was afraid a long time ago, let's say back in 2002, 2003, I was afraid that something bad was going to happen to me. Some in particular, I was afraid that something was going to happen to me. So I kind of went to the extreme a little bit and I didn't know it. The very thing that I was afraid that was going to happen to me, that's the very thing that happened. That's the very thing that happened. How did it happen? My faith and fear caused it to come to pass. I had faith and fear and didn't even know it. Right. So I had faith but it was in a negative form. So I got what I was believing. See, I was believing and didn't even know it. Okay. That's how come I can talk about fear and I can talk about faith. I'm telling you from experience, if you're afraid of anything and if you terrified by it, you get anxiety about it, you in fear and you got a door open and you need to repent quickly. Amen. I told you when I had COVID, that didn't happen because I was afraid of COVID. That happened because I missed it. That was my fault. I missed it. God told me not to do something and I didn't deliberately disobey God. Like, oh, forget what God said. I'm going to do it anyway. I didn't deliberately disobey God. I forgot what he said. And I missed it. So that wasn't because I was afraid. That's because I did something that I shouldn't have did. And it came upon me. And I had to get rid of it. Now, granted, I only had it two to three days. But still, it happened. Right. You got to have faith for healing. And in order to keep yourself up 
for faith for healing to keep it off of you, you got to be in faith about it all the time. All the time. You can meditate on scriptures. See, you want to build your faith for healing when ain't nothing wrong with you. Amen. Right. Amen. So when some try to attack you, your faith is already up. So all you got to do is speak to it and you've been to get rid of it. You won't have COVID. You won't have all this other stuff. You won't have these flu symptoms. It'll try to attack you, but you get rid of it within 24 hours because your faith level is already up. You already up on top of it. So when it come, oh, I already got faith for it. I'm healed. And when you start speaking what you believe, then you're going to have what you believe. Amen. That's how you got to do it. You want to build your faith for healing when ain't nothing wrong with you. So when you when your body does get attacked with something, you got enough faith to fight it off. Don't never, when something come up on your body, your health, don't never just act like a possum, just play dead and just roll over and let the sickness get the best of you. You want to fight for your health. Amen. Amen. Because for one, it's a good testimony. And for two, you got to do what God called you to do. You can't do that sick. You got to, you got to fight for your health. You got to, you got to have faith for healing. It's the same way with finances. The same thing. You got to have faith for finances. So when these crunches come, like they say now, when these unexpected depressions come in the world or these crunches come, oh, we got to cut down on, uh, we got to cut down on employees. We got to lay people off because of, because of COVID or because of this. We got to lay some people off. You got to have faith for healing. I mean, you got to have faith for finances. You got to have faith in Jehovah Jireh. You got to have faith in El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. Amen. You want to get up on your faith for finances when you have a lot of money, when you're doing good, so you can stay on top of it. Amen. Amen. Don't wait till the crunch come and then start trying to build your faith. I ain't going to say it's too late, but you can still come out of it. It would take you longer. Right. As if you already was built up on your faith. You could walk right out of it. When you already got faith for healing and you already whole, ain't nothing wrong with you. When the sickness attack your body, you'll get rid of it. I had COVID last year. And since then, I can remember I've been attacked. We've been attacked by COVID like probably two or three times. And I remember twice, I know for sure, that we been it tried to come on us again. <clears throat> but guess what? We done defeated it already, so we already got faith for it. Amen. So when it came, my wife came to me and said, I don't feel good. <laughs> I, I don't feel good. <laughs> I said, come here. <laughs> she stood up. I got the bottle of anointing oil. I prayed for it. Now, this midday, I anointed her, prayed for her, rebuked the symptoms. The next day, she was good. Amen. She had COVID symptoms. Mm -hmm. They was coming. And because I had them first, but I didn't say nothing. Because I felt, I felt my chest was starting to hurt again. And I'm like, oh, no, I remember what that was. So I'm fighting it. Instantly. See, that's the thing. When they come, when you feel, when you see the symptoms, you want to fight right then and there. Right. Don't give because it's trying to settle in on you. Don't give it time to settle in. It's trying to find a dwelling place. Don't give it time to settle in. The moment you feel the symptom, that's when you attack it. Because you got a better chance of getting rid of it because it's trying to settle in and you like, no, you're not. So I had the symptom. I didn't tell her. I didn't say nothing. I was just fighting it on my own prayer time. 
So I cursed it on my own personal prayer time. And I cursed it that when it came and tried to attack her, we didn't have, we didn't have them symptoms 24 hours. They was gone like seven hours later. They was gone. You got to have faith for healing. You got to have faith for healing. It's very important. You got to have faith for healing. You got to have faith for finances. When you see symptoms trying to attack your body, you call yourself healed. Call yourself healed. You can declare yourself healed. You can call yourself healed. The Bible says, by your words are you justified, and by your words are you condemned. You can call yourself healed. Amen. If you sick, if you fight symptoms, you can call yourself healed. You say, Brother Steve, how can I do that? Just say I'm healed. It's very simple. Call yourself healed. You call in the thing that's not as though it was. You putting positive pressure on a negative situation. The positive pressure is the faith in the word of God and behind what you're saying. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you believe what you say, you will have what you say. Amen. So confessing what you believe, that's what's going to come to pass. You can call yourself healed. You can call yourself whole. You can call yourself free. If you're facing any kind of depression, you can call yourself free. You can do that. Let the words come out of your mouth. That's all you got to do. You declaring and you making a statement. No, I'm not depressed. I'm free. Right. Amen. Right. You can call yourself healed. You can call yourself whole. Start calling yourself healed. Start calling yourself whole. Don't just sit there and don't say nothing. Right. Right. Start opening your mouth. Start talking. Right. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 11. Verse 12. The Bible says, And on the morrow, when they, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came happily. He might find anything thereon. And when he came into it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Jesus answered and said unto it. He said unto it. He's talking to a tree. He's talking to a tree. Is he crazy? No, he's not crazy. He's talking. He's having a conversation with a tree. The Bible says he answered and said unto it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem and his disciples heard it. Now I'm going to go down to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto them, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus said, unto them have faith in God now that is originally translated have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith what is the God kind of faith call the thing that's not as though it was when God in the book of Genesis 
when God seen darkness, he said light be and light was. He called the thing that was not as though it was. When he seen Gideon, Gideon was poor. He said, thou mighty man of valor. He called the thing that was not as though it was. And Gideon became a mighty man of valor. You call the thing that's not as though it was. If you face in any bad situation, you act like God. You act like the Lord. Bad reports, you speak just the opposite of what it say. You speak the results that you want to have. See, you can have whatsoever you say. Whatever faith you have and what you say, that's what you're going to have. If you want a good report and it's a negative report in the natural, you start calling the thing that's not as though it was. Let's just say you want, you want, you want to be out of debt, right? Let's just say you want to be out of debt. This is very practical and it's very simple. You can apply this even right now sitting in church. You can apply this principle that I'm getting ready to tell you. Let's just say you got some debt and you want to get out of debt. The first thing you should do, open your mouth and declare I'm debt free. That's the first step. I am debt free. Then you add scripture to it. Romans 13, 8. I owe no man nothing but love. So now you got something to stand on. You got faith. You got the word of God, which is faith. You got something to stand on. So now you just start. You got a scripture to stand on. I owe no man nothing but love. And in Deuteronomy, the Bible says, in Deuteronomy 28, I believe, God will make you the lender and not the borrower. See, now you got two scriptures to stand on to get out of debt. I owe no man nothing but love. Lord, I thank you for making me the lender and not the borrower. I'm the bank. I'm not the borrower. Amen. Amen. So you got debt. Now you got two scriptures you can start confessing. On your own time, you can start calling yourself debt free. The word of God said you can. Right. Jesus said, if you got faith in whatever you say, <coughs> you will have whatever you say. So all you got to do is say what you believe, mean what you say, and say what you mean. You want to be debt free? Lord, I thank you that I owe no man nothing but love. Lord, I thank you. I am debt free. And when you start confessing it over and over, faith is going to come. It's going to drop in your heart. Amen. And the more faith that drops in your heart, the more you speak it, the more it's going to come to pass. It's like, I like to use this example. You're putting positive pressure on it. You're putting positive pressure on a negative situation. It's going to change. Jesus said it would in Mark 11. Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, I always like to say this, what does a mountain represent? Not a physical mountain, but mountain in our personal lives, problems, situations, that we deal with obstacles that comes in our way to stop us from moving forward or to stop us from making some kind of progress. It's a mountain. It's a mountain. And Jesus said, have the God kind of faith for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this problem, this obstacle, 
this sickness, this disease, this depression, these are mountains. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. He shall have whatsoever he says. If you believe that the things you say are going to come to pass. So if you got faith in what you're saying, Jesus said it's going to come to pass. Sometimes when I confess the word or when I confess what I believe, I can feel the faith in my spirit. And I know 100% something is going on. You judge it by, in your, you judge it by your spirit. Some, something is happening right now. I can feel it. And I said, I woke up maybe two weeks ago. I woke up out of my sleep. And I said something about this. I, was, I woke up out of my spirit. I woke up out of my sleep prophesying. I woke up out of my sleep prophesying. And I caught the very tail end of what I said. I woke up out of my sleep. And I was prophesying. And I looked at my wife when I woke up. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I woke up prophesying and this is what I said. Now I'm going to tell you, something is happening right now. Something's going on. Something is taking place. I knew it. See, your spirit knows things that your natural mind don't know. Right. Your spirit knows because the Holy Ghost is there. Right. So all you got to do is tap into the mind of God. And you will find out what he knows. Praying in other tongues, that's how you get it. Spending time in God's presence, that's how you get it. Your spirit man know the whole time. It's just a matter of praying it out. Mm -hmm.